All right, so today uh, we're gonna take a look at adding the paddle shifters to the Alfa Romeo, Giulia, and Stelvio models. Um, it is not a particularly challenging job, um, and the steering wheel definitely does not have to be pulled, which is a plus. I don't perform maintenance on the car myself, and I'm generally not well versed with computers, so nonetheless, I was still able to make it work, and I believe that anybody can do this. Um, I used the main write-up on the forums, and it was a fantastic guide, but I thought making a video for people with far less experience, such as myself, uh, could be beneficial. Okay, so this specific car is a 2017 year model, and 2018 to present models have something known as a security gateway module, and this is to prevent hacking. Uh, it's probably a great idea, but for the purpose of accessing modules on the car, um, you need to bypass it. So you can bypass this module by purchasing the SGW bypass plug from Eurocompulsion, as an example. Um, as I don't have to deal with the security gateway, I can't really speak to it very much, but I'll provide a link to the product in the description below. Okay, so let's take a look at what we need to buy in order to get the job done successfully. So firstly, you're going to buy a registered copy of Multi ECU Scan, which is 50 euros from their website. You're going to download the program first and then you buy the key to activate it. So next, you're going to buy the gray and blue OBD cable adapters plus the USB diagnostic lead. All of this costs about 35 pounds from iDiagnostics in the UK. Uh, the cables work very well. I would definitely recommend them. Uh, the company itself has a pretty good reputation. So next, you'll be replacing your lower steering column cowl with one that has holes meant for the paddle shifters. The uh, part number for this is 6CV10LXHAA. So this is what you're going to be looking for. As you can see, there are holes here that the paddle shifters will go through. For comparison, this is the original one. You could Dremel out holes, um, but the new one, this new part, is only about $34 excluding shipping, so not a very expensive part to purchase, and certainly looks nice. So for tools, you're going to want a, a Torx T20 either on the um, ratchet or perhaps a screwdriver like this one, which worked for me. Uh, you're also going to need the T8 as an Allen key, very important. Um, perhaps buy a few on Amazon as they're kind of hard to find. Um, and then these bits are magnetic and go into this tool and because these bits are magnetic you can easily hold the screw and what I used this for was to uh, have the screws in place and then I would actually turn the screws with the allen key. So I would recommend something like this uh, which came in this package. For the purpose of disconnecting the battery um, you're going to probably want to buy a 10 millimeter wrench in order to loosen the nut to lift the terminal off the battery post. There's also a quick disconnect method, but I did not try that myself. This brings us to the challenging part, which is locating and buying the paddle shifters. You don't want to ask your dealer about this because there's no part number for just the paddle shifters. They're going to ask you to purchase the entire assembly, which is about $600 plus shipping. I recommend searching global eBay sites and searching for the paddles. They'll pop up from time to time. You only need the paddles themselves, but need to make sure they work correctly, they're not damaged, and the connector that connects to the car is present and not damaged either. Oftentimes, much like this, they're sold with the indicator stocks, but you don't need to use them, as well as other parts. When buying the paddles, it's also really helpful if you can get the T8 screws that are included, because you can reuse these to mount them to your car. Uh, the paddles were on this, but I've since installed it into the car. So, with regard to pricing, this entire assembly, which did include the paddles that are now installed in the car, cost about $240 shipped from the UK to the United States. It's a pretty good deal, and I would say that anything under 300 is probably what you should be paying. Alright, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to unplug the battery to be safe while working in the car. You can either loosen the 10 millimeter nut and lift the negative terminal, or use the quick disconnect method if you're familiar with that. You either need to leave the trunk open while doing this, or have the emergency trunk release left hanging out of the trunk so you can open it again. If the battery is disconnected, the trunk does not open normally. So the emergency trunk release is located right here, kind of near the, uh, the middle of the trunk with the emergency kit. So basically you're going to find this, you're going to unscrew it. For you, if you've never used it before, the uh, cable's not going to be showing, probably. Uh, it's going to come out, and then you can close the trunk with this hanging out. And it'll, it'll sit like that, and then you can pull that and the trunk will open, even if the battery's disconnected. All right, and then to uh, locate the battery and disconnect it, you're just going to do this. The battery's in there. 
you're going to loosen the 10 millimeter nut and then lift the uh, terminal off the post or use the quick disconnect and then your battery's disconnected. All right, so this is what we're going to be uh, removing first. This is the lower steering column cowl and you're going to be removing the, um, the two Torx T20 screws either with the ratchet or your screwdriver and then once the screws come out you're just going to pull this straight down and it should unclip. Alright so once the lower cowl is removed you're going to see something that looks looks probably like this. You're going to see these three connectors one, two, three and you're going to press the detent to uh, allow them to come out and you're going to disconnect them. Somewhere around here, you're also going to see a connector that's taped off with brown tape. You're going to remove the brown tape and then expose the connector. This is the connector that's going to connect to the paddle shifters. This is probably the best angle that I can show you of the screws holding the paddles on. So as you can see here, you got to have the paddle shifters in place and then have the screw ready and then screw it into the assembly. This is where I would use the magnetic tool so you can get a good handle of the screw. And then once the screw is seated in there, then you can go in later and use the Allen key to really tighten it and make sure it's uh, fitting well. So this is the right side of the pedal shifters. The top screw there, there, so you see two screws on the top. The right one is the one that holds the pedal shifters in and that you need to turn clockwise to tighten to the assembly. And then the one on the bottom there, that is the second one much harder to reach but still doable with the allen key. So as you can see here this is the left side of the paddle shifters same deal as the uh, the other side the uh, that top one is going to be the one that you're screwing in to attach them uh, it's even tighter on the second screw on this side I cannot even really film it but basically there's one in the same place uh, towards the bottom that you can reach with the allen key. So when the paddles are mounted, uh, they should definitely feel firm. They shouldn't feel loose. You, you could attach just the top two screws and it would probably work. But I think if you want to do the job correctly, 100%, you do uh, all four screws. As you can see, this, you know, it's very, very nice and tight, crisp, uh, works nicely. Just like, you know, as if it came out of the factory. All right, so I'm aware the uh, tutorial on screwing in those screws to mount the paddle shifters is not really the greatest. But if you buy the assembly used and it has the indicator stocks, you can very easily figure out what you're looking at and screwing in. You'll know exactly the locations. But even if you don't, um, there aren't too many places that these things can really go in. So you just kind of got to figure it out by trial and error. Uh, and I'll, I'll include some photos in the video as well uh, in hopes of being helpful. All right, so now that the paddle shifters are mounted um, and screwed into the assembly, you're gonna wanna uh, reconnect those three connectors that you unplugged earlier. So there's the first one, the second one, and the third one. They're all different sizes, so the, the chances of you putting them in the wrong place are pretty slim. Uh, and then finally, you're gonna connect that fourth connector that you uncovered with the tape and connect the connector from the paddle shifters to that all right, so I just installed this. It took me far longer than it should have, um, but basically there are two two things that will be stopping you from connecting it. But once you get over the two like posts, then it will uh, sit upright very nicely, and then the top part can click into place um, without any issue. So it the the part definitely fits. It's just you have to make sure that you're clearing whatever's in the way. So first and foremost, before we do anything in a multi-ECU scan, um, with the cables, hopefully you got uh, instructions that you could at least take a look at, but if you didn't, um, basically you're going to go on a Windows PC to the device manager, and uh, device manager, as you can see if it focuses, um, it says device manager, I can tell you that, and then you're going to find Basically, it says uh, ports, COM, and LPT. Then you're going to find the USB serial port, in this case, COM4. You're going to press that. It says it's uh, working properly. You're going to go to your port settings. Sorry, it's not focusing. 
you're gonna go to your port settings you're gonna click advanced okay 4096 receive and transmit is what I have latency this is important you want to turn that all the way down everything else should stay the same as far as I know so you're gonna press OK OK everything kinda syncs up then you go to your settings on multi ECU scan Okay, you go to uh, interfaces, you choose, uh, I have the high speed one going, so it says ELM 327 blah 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 high speed, I think that works for me, uh, COM4, that is the port that's in use obviously, and then for this uh, serial port speed, 38,400 is what I have. This varies, I had a lot of issues early on, um, but basically these are the settings that I use and they work for me. Uh, highly recommend all drivers be up to date, so go to the website and download all drivers needed for the um, cables. And also, if it tells you um, if it tells you to download any drivers from the internet, I would just go and do that as well. Um, just just download everything that they want, and if the computer automatically downloads drivers, let it do that. So then you really shouldn't have any issues. So these are the settings. All right, so. We're in multi ECU scan, and the first thing we're gonna do is take the, um, the basically the diagnostic lead, the U USB diagnostic lead, plug this into the uh, OBD2 port, and then connect the other end to the computer. You're not gonna put the blue or the gray adapters uh, immediately on. That comes later. All right, so that's connected. We're gonna have the car in accessory power mode, so turning on the car without your foot on the brake. Okay. All right, so you're gonna find you're gonna find the Alfa Romeo Giulia, um, and then you're going to uh, press connect right here on the um, body can setup proxy alignment sorry for the glare alright so it says the vehicle is properly configured and that the proxy alignment is not needed you're gonna say yes and now you have access to um, basically everything so you're gonna go to adjustments and then you're gonna find your uh, steering wheel paddles. So right now they say present. For you, if you don't have the paddles, it will say not present. You're gonna click the not present or present. You're gonna then click execute. And then you can choose, choose your option. I'm obviously going to leave it because I've done it already. And then you press okay. And then I believe you'd press Yes, and then you then you'd press uh, yes to uh, confirm it. I'm just gonna press escape though, or N. And then after that, you press execute. It's gonna say vehicle not properly configured, uh, and then you have to run a proxy alignment. So basically, it will run just with this cable for a little while, and then it will say something to the likes of uh, connect, you know, connect the blue adapter. So it basically pauses the alignment. You unplug this, you connect the blue adapter, or gray, whatever it asks for, plug it back in and press continue, and it does that with the blue and it does it with the gray. And after a while, then it's completely done and it should say success. And then you turn, you turn the car off, and then uh, it should be enabled. I'm gonna put it in the manual. Okay, this is M1, M2, M1. Good, it works. Okay, if anyone has any questions, please comment below. I will try my best to answer them. Pretty sure now that I've done it, I could definitely do it again and probably like a third of the time. So, thank you.